So a white van driver um, came speeding probably about 50 miles an hour, veered off the road into the crowds of people that were walking, uh, pedestrians walking along the pavement. Um, he swerved right around me and then hit uh, about five or six people. Guidance of our Father, and the strength of our Savior. White power! White power! What do we want? White power! What do we need? White power! There are two interesting tracks, two interesting jihadi tracks. Um, one is inspired by a guy named Louis Beam, who was ambassador for the Aryan Nations. This is a white supremacist group and a leader of the Ku Klux Klan who wrote a 20-page um, article called Leaderless and Resistance, in which he argued that if you can just diffuse the message in the susceptible population without claiming authorship and responsibility, then if they're inspired to do things, including attacks, then there's no way they can attribute responsibility to anyone. And if they can't attribute it as responsibility and punish anyone, then anybody can do it and it can keep going on. The terrorist attacks of the Islamic State are very well described. The strategy is very well described in a tract uh, written back in, more than a decade ago by a guy under the pseudonym of Naji, uh, an Egyptian, called Idarat Atawahush, which means the management of savagery or chaos. And it's required reading for every leader, every emir of the Islamic State. But it outlines exactly what they're going to do and what they're up to. And everything they've done has followed this, this um, sort of plan laid out in the Idarat Tawahush. We believe we are experiencing a new trend in the threat we face, as terrorism breeds terrorism. And perpetrators are inspired to attack, not only on the basis of carefully constructed plots after years of planning and training, and not even as lone attackers radicalized online, but by copying one another and often using the crudest of means of attack. So the idea is wherever there's chaos in the world, the Islamic State Revolution is going to man go in and manage it. And wherever our ex enemies exist, we are to create chaos in which we then will go in to manage. Now, how do we create chaos? Well, this is to be um, combined with another core strategy, which is called eliminating the gray zone. The gray zone is the area between true believers and true infidels, where most of humanity lives, including most Muslims. And so how do we eliminate the gray zone so we have the clear divide between true infidels and true believers? And they say, well, the best way to do this is create chaos by carrying attacks against soft targets. Theaters, sports events, things, cafes, things that can't possibly be defended on a massive scale. And that would undermine faith in the people's belief that their government provides even basic security, which is the most important function of government. At the same time, the fact that, that you can't attribute it actually to any one person or thing um, means that everybody who's Muslim is going to be viewed with suspicion because there's already bias against Muslims. And even if it's only a small bias at the beginning, we can make it a much greater bias by doing these kinds of acts. And doing so, then we show Muslims, and creating this suspicion and this hostility towards Muslims in the diaspora, we show the Muslims in the diaspora that trying to live in peace only brings pain and suffering. So better to join us, better to come to us. So that's basically what the media campaign is at. And they use, in jujitsu style, the Western media's capacity to magnify these events as their own tool. It is the most important tool in their arsenal, far more than the explosives themselves, and highly successful.